Hi folks, this video is an overview of the UMe social network. Google Plus is dead. Long live Google Plus. Well, in spirit anyway, as some of the best of Google Plus does live on now within UMe social. But the network is not just a clone of Google Plus. It has its own unique identity and characteristics, which I'll be trying to highlight in this video. The name itself is derived from the saying, it's all about you and me, or put more simply, it's about personal connections and a place where people can interact in a safe environment. A site that has the feel of Google Plus without being Google Plus. The video is not just aimed at ex Google Plus users though, but also towards users of Facebook who are tired of advertising being shoved everywhere, having their personal data abused, having odd algorithms push unwanted posts to the top of their feed stream, whilst burying other important posts, and who are also tired of a cluttered, overly busy interface. If you are any other user of a social network, wondering whether Yumi Social is a place that you want to call home in future, this video is also for you, to help you make up your mind. I say Facebook because Yumi Social is most similar in format to Facebook, Friendica, and other microblogging platforms. But let me just position it first in terms of a type of hosting. We all know centrally hosted platforms such as Facebook and Twitter, which rely on a single service to be up and not blocked or censored, and which are run by large corporations. Then we have decentralized platforms such as Friendica, Hubzilla, Diaspora, etc., with separate nodes which you can join or leave and which are usually administered by individuals who manage their own set of rules. And then you get peer-to-peer -peer networks such as Ether and Scuttlebutt, which exist on your own computer. You are a node and use a common protocol to send posts and receive them from other nodes. So of the three types, Yumi Social is a centralized network which is hosted in Greece in the European Union. So it falls under the GDPR, which to be honest is some of the best privacy protection rights we could ask for. And that's a plus. I'll touch on the ownership later on when I wrap up, but suffice to say the creator is very passionate about some of the best features of Google Plus and has carried over those concepts of no advertising, having circles and collections, having plus ones for likes, text formatting in posts and so on. But what he has added is his hands-on approach to being involved in the network daily and responding directly to users' requests, queries and comments. He also actively uses the network himself and there are no venture capitalists to please or data mining for cash on the side. I'll also touch on the funding and the future of the network near wrap up time. He does have a team of moderators assisting, so users do see real hands-on responsiveness. There is a real human touch scene and not like in Google Plus's case, an anonymous, usually silent presence somewhere in the background. This is quite key and not something I've seen in any other network I'm currently on. Unless a Facebook user can tell me they see Mark Zuckerberg chiming in regularly on comments and on end user posts. I'll also be looking at how the network provides a feature for you to import your old Google Plus takeout posts into collections on Yumi Social so that they can see the light of day again. By the way, if you've forgotten already what Google Plus looked like, I'll put some links in the description below to videos I took of Google Plus just before it shut down. This video may take some time. So I will include chapter links in the description as well for you to jump forwards or backwards to any particular part. So let's get into Yumi Social and I'll follow my usual approach for social networks by moving around the interface first, then looking at any settings and options and concluding with how to post before moving into the wrap up for the video. This is the main home screen view. And the feed stream here will adjust into a single column, two or more columns, depending on the width of the window that you have open. So mobile will look much the same, but it'll be probably a single column view unless you're using a tablet or something in landscape view. This is your home view though, showing the profiles as well as groups, collections that you follow. Notice there's no adverts. If I unfollow the person, their posts disappear from here. Hovering over a name, will allow you to, here at the bottom, follow or unfollow them, and also will allow you to quickly send a private message. There's another option here on the bottom right uh, regarding adding them to circles, which I'll come to a little bit later in the video. 
Then also on the top right menu here of a post, you'll see there's also an option to report the profile of the post to the admins. And we've also asked that they add a block option so that you can control what you see even inside of open streams. So remember, there may be things that are not violating any conditions of the site, but it may be something that you don't want to see. So in that case, you can just block it. Other people will still see it and it won't affect anybody else. Below the post, you'll see there's also options here for things like translate. And I will get to translate just now. Oh, and by the way, just now in South Africa does not mean right now or immediately. It means in a little while when I get to it. Then you can also click over here if you want to leave a comment and you have options over here to share the post. You can share it either in a circle that you've got, in other words, those friends that you've got in a circle or people, on a friend's wall, in a group, or in a collection via email, on my own wall, or copy link. So a copy link is interesting because that allows you, these posts, if, a, if they're public posts, if you've set them to public, the link will be visible outside of the network. So you can share your post through this link to WhatsApp, Telegram, Signal, or any other external social media service as well, or Twitter or anything else. So pretty nice. That's actually quite useful for bloggers and so on to get uh, visibility outside of the network. And then on the right-hand side of the stream here, You'll see we've just got a few recommended collections and groups. Then at the top here in the search box, this is where you're going to be searching now for other people or groups or collections to follow. So if you type in, for example, let's see environment, it's bringing up already a couple of groups and collections, but you can go down here to view all, and you'll see there it gives you a a full list of everything that matches for environment. You can filter further on the left here. Obviously, there's no personal pages or business pages at the moment, but if I was to type a name in, you'll see there now it does show you a filter option for one. This, this is how you're going to ba do basic searching on the site. Then moving from the search box here on the top, let's run through these various other views you've got on the top of the screen. The first one, or the next one, being Discover. When you register on the network, you do indicate, you are asked to indicate a minimum of three interests, or you could add more. But what's now filling this Discover stream is not necessarily people I'm following, but it's people that are matching those same interests that I put down. So I probably had motorcycling or something in here. And you can go down. And what I want to show you here was just how the translate works. So here is somebody that's writing, I think it's in French. I suspect. And if I go down just below the post, if you go click on the translate button, you click there and then move up on the post. And what you'll see is there's the original postal and it's added a little translate box there. My preference obviously is to translate into English, so it translates into English for me. But in your case, you might be even translating from English into Italian or German or, or something else. And that's quite handy. It's really on the fly, uh, works quite nicely. Then moving to the next option on the top here, we've got business pages. So there are some business pages registered already. They are currently, I think as far as I know, everything is still free on business pages. The intention is that as part of looking at some sustainability towards the site, profit-making businesses and so on will probably be asked to contribute some small amount monthly, and this will help for the site itself. But this will be obviously now for business pages to register themselves. And while we're on it, we can just mention there are these little little dots you see. That means that they're offline at the moment or, or away. They're not present um, on the site. There are on some of the profiles, you will see little green dots here, meaning that person is online at the moment. But it's also worth us mentioning that the indication is also that personal pages, posting, collections, and groups will always remain free. They're not going to be charged for it all. The site will always be free for that. Then the other two ones we're going to look at here are groups and collections and they are basically the same i'll come to the differences in a minute about them but both of them have got an option here that you can search for something in a group you can sort it by date created or popularity there are some categories and they do add every now and again as well to the categories so you can search by category and you can search for public or private or restricted and then you just apply the filter and that's basically how you're going to narrow down the list of groups to, to look at or to find. And obviously you can create a group over there. 
you'll notice if I go to collections, it's going to look very, very similar. But what I also want to say is that collections and groups was one of Google Plus's great strengths, being able to find topics of interest or hobbies because they focused on something that you are interested in and have in common with other people out there, irrespective of whether they are your own family or friends. So if pottery is your thing, you get to see only posts about pottery in that group or collection, and you are associating with people worldwide with that same interest versus following a person's profile alone where they are posting also about their cat, their steam engine, their car engine rebuilding, of which you've got zero interest. So I'm actually a big fan of groups and collections, and not enough networks have this. And because Google Plus had it, I had amassed about just over 500,000 followers on my tech and gadgets collection alone there. And I think this was largely because people appreciated posts focused on a specific topic versus just lots of general posts. Likewise today, on MeWe, which also offers this, I have a, over 10,000 followers already. Now that network has started up a lot earlier than Yumi Social, so obviously there's a bigger and massive numbers that are there, but it's a similar concept, and I see that as still as a very successful concept. I cannot emphasize enough how important groups and collections are to relevance. Ideally, profile following, you want to leave really for your own friends and family, so that you can see everything that they post. So let's differentiate now a little bit between groups and collections. The main difference is around who has permission to create posts. So on a group, anyone who is a member can post content. Content is created and shared by everyone. You need to actively moderate that, but it can be very dynamic and creative. Collections only has the owner of the collection able to post and create content. I like collections though because I like to keep a tight rein on how many posts appear per day and I do not have to spend my whole day moderating posts and people that are repeated posts and so on that have been made inside a group. The privacy settings available for both groups and collections are as follows though. You've got public where anybody can see the post by default and can just click to join the group or follow the collection without needing approval and you'll see those over here where you see the the little follow button you can just click to follow then you've got restricted groups and collections anyone can see the posts however to join that group or to follow the collection the member needs to apply to join and it's then up to the owner of the group or the collection to approve it or decline once they've approved those people can then post and they can comment inside the group or inside the collections and you'll see these are the ones where you get things like send request over here those are the type of ones you've got a request and then the last type is private groups no one can see the posts at all in a private group or collection unless they've applied and have already been approved by the owner but just a note here to remember is that admins can see private groups so they're not encrypted and yeah don't go and do something illegal or contrary to the terms and conditions of the site the other thing I just want to point out here on collections, this is now where things also differ a little bit and I get to one of the features of Yumi Social. On the left hand side here below the apply filters and the create collection, you also see there's an import collection. What this is intended to do is where you've got a Google Plus takeout where you downloaded your data from Google Plus, it will have all been downloaded in a collection of related JSON files. What this import collection does is it'll prompt you and browse for your collection file. You'll click on that, select it, and it'll upload it and create a new collection inside of Yumi Social. And then your old posts will be available. I can show you an example here. Now, what I did was, and this is now a special case, we've also discovered mine was also one of some Google Plus takeouts that got broken. And what the result was is they never created collections. So what Google apparently did is they just dumped all my posts loose and I've got some like 30,000 posts in one long stream, but they're not in collections anymore. So what Yumi Social has done is they've made allowance also for broken collections. And I don't think you're going to find this in any other network. Effectively, if you've gone and created now an empty collection that you're intending to upload your Google Plus takeout files into, you can also go into the collection and say import to collection. And what that's going to allow you to do is to select individual JSON 
files because that's all I've got that came out of Google Plus, thousands of them. And I know it's a lot, but I can at least go through them and pick and select a couple or a good couple that I'd like to still feature or I'd like to be, have found searchable or make available still to people. So I am basically going through those slowly at the moment. And you'll see this is a couple that I have done. I will explain just now why you're seeing duplicates here. It's another feature of Yumi Social. It's unfortunate that Google Plus is, you know, we can't fix actually what Google Plus had already exported. Just a note though, if you are importing your Google Plus takeouts, when you've got a collection, mark that collection as private while you're still busy doing the import or imports of individual files. Because what will otherwise happen is it'll fill up everybody's stream, the public stream, with potentially thousands of posts that you've imported. So make it private. And when you're finished and you're ready to share it with the world, then you can just go in and change that to public. So yeah, moving off collections then, I think we've covered really the basics of collections. Moving along further here, we've got the messages. Messages are essentially conversations, private conversations, again, not encrypted, but it's with individuals. So you can message people directly and you'll also see, for example, here's a case of three of us participating in one conversation. So that's an ongoing conversation thread that three of us have got at, at or, we, or we had at the time, actually, should I say. So that's the example of, so you can message directly. That's where you saw earlier on the profile where you message somebody, it'll pop up in here, also with an alert over there at the top to tell you. Then next along the top is notifications. This is pretty well much the usual thing, but you can click on them individually here. For example, the tick to mark them as red, you can delete them, you can clear all, or you can mark all as red. If you mark all as red, they still show here, but they won't be in bold. And if you say clear all, of course, they will disappear. So let's move on then to profile. This is the profile that you've got on the social network. And essentially it's a summary, including any photos. Actually, there is a separate photo service altogether, but it's not part of Yumi Social. But within Yumi Social, you can upload photos for posts and that sort of thing and also share. You've got some basic albums you can create here as you've seen and they've got some multiple photos in them but it's not offering you a full screen view of the photos like a slideshow really and it's also not offering any caption capability so if you really want to use proper photo albums i'll show you in a, in a minute or so how you can get to the photo site while we on the profile view up here i can just also show you there's also a little toggle over here if you click this toggle it will change to light mode and you'll see actually that looks pretty well much like Google Plus looked like. If you ever saw Google Plus, this is very much like the, the sort of the look and feel that we used to have there. You'll see also little plus ones for likes there. I think the dark mode sort of made it look a bit uh, not so familiar as Google Plus, but certainly in the light mode, you can immediately almost recognize that sort of look and feel. So let me just go back to dark mode and back to the profile view. So the, the settings that you've got actually available for Yumi Social can be found really here within the edit profile. And if you're on edit profile, you'll see you've got your username there that you can set and it with a, with a, um, a sort of a vanity link there really if you want to call it that. A phone number is optional, email. Email is for your alerts and notifications and, and admin notices. Then you've got a birthday as well, which you can make public or hide or whatever you want to do. A country, a city, you can hide city location there. You've got gender. And then the about part is where you fill in your longer bio information. You can see here's a couple of the, the default interests that you can select. And you've also got further along on the settings, you've got your change password options over there. And there's also some notification settings that you can set. Social links to some external social networks you can set. I've already set one here for an RSS feed and my Hubzilla account. Those are two custom links that you can use for any other, any other links you want to set up. And then your advanced settings are just basically your exporting or downloading of your information in either JSON or XML format. 
and you can delete your whole account and posts and remove yourself as well if you want to. So let's just go back to profile view. I just want to show you something else over here around circles. Circles, you're going to find circles under your follows view. view. If you go to people you're following, you'll see on the left here, are two circles that I've already created. So let me just stop there quickly and just talk about circles. So the, the idea with Google Plus was that you could, when you're making posts, you could keep, instead of just posting to everybody publicly, you could actually separate posts for work friends, um, family, personal friends, whatever else you wanted to do, or maybe, you know, any hobbies, whatever the case is. But then when you made those posts, the posts, you could select a circle and it would be visible just to the people that you've added to that circle. They don't see actually who's in the circle, but those five or 10 or 20 people will see your post. Other people will not see it. You could also combine to have two or three circles if, if you wanted to. And then by definition, that would mean they would not be public posts, but they would be visible and they could be interacted with with the people you intend to see it. So many people like to keep, say, their private friend's life separate from their work colleagues. That That's one sort of way of doing it. So on your profile, if you go to following, you'll see over here, you can create a new circle. You can just give it any name and you can go about adding users. Or if you look here, if you just drop down, I have got two circles created already over there. Then the two or more circles you could just pick and that person would be dropped into the circle. The nice thing, as I said, is they don't know who's in the circle. So yes, you could have their nice people, not nice people, whatever you want to call your circles. Um, but yeah, circles are quite a powerful concept and not many people do it. If you take things like Twitter or most networks, it's public or it's not. And um, I will be covering, I think it's Hubzilla still. Hubzilla does have that facility as well. But um, just to mention it, it's quite a powerful feature. Then I can just show here on the top right, there's another little drop down menu. And these links here, this is what I was talking about earlier about the sustainability of the site. There is an optional store, global and European store with merchandise in like t-shirts and mugs and that sort of thing. So there are some things being done around that. And there's also a banking service and a hosting service. And the one I just wanted to quickly touch on is there is Yumi Photos. I'm not gonna go into the whole thing, but you'll see it is a separate site. And it is almost like a Flickr site. It's actually got a lot more functionality around photos and captioning and titles and tagging and that sort of thing. So, you know, we're thinking about if you want to make use of photos. And then there's also a link over there down to the Android mobile app. Remember, this is already mobile friendly, so it will open and work functionally correctly in any mobile web browser as well. So I think we can get on to making a post then. So the, the one thing to remember then with making posts is there's two different places you need to be thinking about. If you're posting a public post to everybody as a profile post, or if you're posting to a circle, you want to be really standing in your home feed and you'll click here if it's a text, going to be a text post and you'll see there you can choose for public or just my followers, only me or one of your circle, one or more of your circles. You'll see there you can choose more of your circles as well. That's essentially how you're going to be posting for profile or for circles. But the one I will show you now is in a collection and this will be obviously exactly the same for a group as well. So if I go to one of my collections, say technology and gadgets, again, you can choose here between a text post, photos. Now with photos, you can add multiple photos to a post and they will all appear there on the post and the person can actually uh, view them as larger viewed, almost like a slideshow as well. It's quite nice. And then under videos, I just want to say there, you can't upload a video and it's largely due to copyright reasons because there's a tremendous problem on social media sites with people uploading videos they did not own or where there's takedown requests and all that sort of thing. So in essence, what you're really doing here is you're linking to a YouTube, a Vimeo or a daily motion video and it will play as if it has been uploaded and posted. It'll play in line within the post without the person even having to leave the feed or the site. So it, it works pretty well. So let's look at a text post then. I'm just going to paste some text in. You don't have to hear me cluttering on the keyboard here. So the first thing you'll see is I've 
just put a line up there which is going to be the title of the post and you can bold that if you want to or you can make it a heading and you can immediately see it gives it better readability as well and other parts you can using markdown all these buttons here you can underline or strike through or whatever you want to do but did you notice something else interesting here with the links i said here c and i've got a link as well as this interesting article at, and I put a second link, what it's done is it's linked both to the post. Now, just about every other social network that I'm aware of, it always links just the first post. So the second link is just lost. It'll disappear as a link in the text. What Yumi Social is doing is they literally are adding the three or four or five links. And why this can be very useful is this post is about, say, environment. Instead of me making five posts about the environment, if I've got something that's related, I can put the context of, of what I'm talking about up here in the description, and I can put the three or four or five links all together in one post. So it's quite neat and tidy and, and very efficient, I think, actually. Then the other things you can also do here is you can just tag somebody or multiple people in the post. That's pretty well much the same as other networks, just to alert them or to draw their attention, you know, if it's a friend or a colleague or family or whatever the case is. And the other thing is, you've got a few other options here before you say create post. You can pin it to the top. That will pin it to the top of your group or your collection. So it's very useful for owners as well, for new people to draw their attention to posts they want to be read. Pin it to the top. If you're on the home feed, if I recall correctly, I think it pins it to the top of your profile view. So if people go to your profile, they'll see your pinned post or two or three pinned posts over there. You can obviously then mute your own browser notifications for this particular post or you can disable resharing by other people or you can disable comments over there and then when you're ready you can just create the post and what i just want to say about the post here is um, also not many networks nowadays are offering you the option to edit your post you can yeah i think it's up to 24 hours or so you can edit your post which is very useful or delete it if it was a mistake and you can also tag it. So you'll see in my collection, and I think the same in groups, you can add tags, whatever tags you want. You can see you can create new tags there. I've put hardware, software, and services, but you know you can make it anything you want to. In essence, you'd go up here to the top and you will just say this relates to software. And that's it. And how people will use this is, so I could have hundreds and hundreds of posts in my technology and gadgets collection, but if they come in here and they're interested in seeing what relates to software, they could just click there on software, and now they see all the posts that are related to software. You can choose multiple tags. So it could be two, you know, if it's software and a service, you could, you, could, you could tag it with both. So very, very useful to organize and keep your, your collections clean. So I think let me just delete that post now because it's not a post I was going to make now. And one last thing I can just say about posts, I think you've got up to 20,000 character limit. I stand under correction there, but I, I know it was less and it had been increased. But either ways, it's, it's a tremendous amount of text you've got to post with. So you can really go to town. It's not going to clutter people's feeds up. What they see is a short excerpt and it says load more underneath. So don't worry that if you type a very long post, it's going to clutter the feeds up. So make use of things like bold and you know various other things to make it a bit more readable. And that basically covers posting. So you know we can probably now move on to wrapping up. But I think before we get there, I just wanted to mention one thing around the network, the sustainability and the ownership and so on. So there is also if you go under collections over here and i am following the one collection it's called yumi social this collection the owner has actually put a couple of posts here that are answering various commonly asked questions so you know what is the background he is the ex-googler who joined in the beta stage i think myself as well actually i think we followed the same thing we actually never met but i did see his name if you look at my video on google plus you'll see his name appears there a few times then he talks here about the funding and the question being the site has been purely funded by myself the reason for this is because i didn't want my dream to be turned into something else due to financial pressure from outside sources in other words you know you can't call the shots and make it happen the way you want to and in fact the first time that he did the site, he did a complete revamp of the whole site because he wasn't happy with the look and feel and how it was working out. 
and the site was redone. We didn't lose any data. Everything was migrated across and we got the sort of newer look and feel now. The site is based in Greece because of the EU's strict privacy laws. So that's been covered. The other thing I just wanted to touch on here was the future. So Yumi Social is but at stage one of the big picture. There are lots of plans for other services, some of which he has launched already. But will it remain a free service? Yes, it will. And the generating of income. So it's not he didn't start this as a money making venture. No, in fact, it's probably cost him a lot of money to produce it. So he has said here, I've already mentioned here that some of those links on the top right there were to deal with promotional items and various other things to make the site more sustainable. Because there was a question, and I think it's higher up here somewhere, the future of a site. Yeah, this is the question that came up. One member stated that if you die, the site dies as well. Well, that was a fair comment considering he owns it 100%, however inaccurate that may be. There are measures in place to hand the site over, along with funding to keep it going, so don't stress. Moderators that are currently moderating the site are from around the world, in fact. So it's not actually just one stopping run from one particular place either. But yes, that is always a concern, I suppose, as we've seen, you know, even with Google Plus. As big as Google was, they also decided to shut it down. So no social network is necessarily going to be there for a hundred years. I think that's one thing you have to accept. You can take your data out and you know import it elsewhere. Uh, as and while we're on that topic, I don't think that many I'm just, I can't actually recall, and somebody else can comment if you, if you know better, are there any other free network sites at the moment that actually allow you to import your Google Plus takeout data? I'm not really, I know of one, but I think it was a, a premium paid for site. So just of interest. Then the other place you can find a lot of frequently asked questions as well is under various, on most of the pages you'll see also at the bottom here, there are links to terms, privacy, contact us, and frequently asked questions. So if you click on there, I have already run through many of these, but you can read them and maybe there's one or two things I haven't answered. Um, he has already answered many of these, these questions, especially around copyright and why and reporting and so on as well. So then I think in summary, just to wrap up, Yumi Social can be used for interests and hobbies and keeping posts and streams on topic as I've already shown, but it can equally be used to keep up with family and friends if they are on the network. So although, for example, events is not yet a feature of Yumi Social, they are actively developing features and listening to user input. So suggest something like it, and maybe this is something that will appear in future. It's certainly already on top of its game with groups and collections, and even lets you reshare those posts outside of the network, unlike MeWe does. I, I didn't mention that, but MeWe's public posts that are on MeWe cannot be seen outside at all. So, you know, that's a shortcoming that they've got, especially if you're a blogger. As far as general posts go, Yumi Social is one of many networks, but if you want to be interest and hobby focused and prefer to follow on topic posts, then Yumi Social should be at the top of your list of considerations. From my own long experience of trying many networks, you can forget about converting all your friends and family across to any new network. So remember, it's okay to have one network where you follow just your personal friends and family and have a second network tuned globally to your interests. Heck, I might have probably seven to eight networks every day, but that's just me. So I hope that gave you a feeling for what Yumi Social is currently like as at 13th of June 2020, because it'll probably have evolved further by next month and the month after. I'm going to be back in a day or two with another interesting video, though, about a game that is not actually new. And although it is a car vehicle simulator, there is no racing involved. It's unlike almost every other driving sim there is. Although it's often featured as a crash simulator, it does some amazing other unique things that I would really like to feature. So that's it for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. But stay safe out there, and I'll see you in my next video.